Hey everyone at home or wherever you happen to be, I am Miss Jamie and welcome back to another Art Explorations for Kids. So today we're going to create a painting with foreground silhouettes of trees with a fence off in the distance and we're going to work with gradients with our watercolor paints to create that sunset background. And what a silhouette is, is something that appears as uh, an object almost in shadow when a light is uh, coming from behind it and you don't see all the details of the object directly. So we're going to start off with our Creative Inspirations number 10 round brush. And I have my water basin here. And when you think of sunsets, you think of really bright, vibrant colors. And we're going to uh, do our sunset today, starting from red, going to orange, and then to yellow. And we're going to cover this entire paper. Now, what I've done is I've taken one of our Bristol sheets and I have cut it in half you can see here and be sure to have an adult help you cut your Bristol paper in half so we're gonna go ahead and begin by getting our brush nice and wet you want to make sure that you have plenty of water soaked into those bristles there and we're going to go into our red now your colors will be in the same uh, formation as mine here on this palette but you do not have to use the exact same colors. We have lots of different shades of reds, oranges, and yellows. But I'm gonna go in here and get this red. I like this one. And you wanna make sure that you really soak the uh, brush bristles into that pan until you see bubbles starting to form. And that just indicates that you're activating the paint and uh, really getting a lot of color on there. I'm going to dip again because I really want a lot of water. And then just holding down the side of my paper, I'm going to go ahead and brush across. And we're going to keep repeating this process. I'm going to dip again, get the paintbrush super wet, get some more of that red and go across again. Now gradients blend from one color to the next and they don't have to be perfectly smooth transitions. Um, we are just trying to create the effect of one color going into another without having harsh divided lines. So you wanna make sure that you get all that color out of that brush and what will also help is if you have a paper towel for blotting. So you can just double check. You can see there I still have a little bit of red on my brush. And I need to get that off. So I'm just going to soak it a little bit more. And this way you make sure that you keep your um, colors nice and fresh so you don't have cross-contamination between your different color pans. So I'm going to go in and get a, another good amount of water soaked into that brush. And I think I want to go into this orange here. And again, I'm going to pull that right across the paper. Just broad sweeping strokes. And I'm going to let it blend up into this red some and come back down. Wet my brush again, get nice and soaked. Make sure to really activate the, the color in the pan. Getting lots of color on the brush. Doing another broad sweeping motion over the paper. And we're gonna keep doing this until we're just a little over halfway down the paper. I'm going to bring a little bit more of the orange up into this red. And you can see 
that we're creating that nice gradient right here. It's starting to blend and we don't have a harsh edge between our red and our orange. And I'm just going to repeat the process of cleaning the brush before going into our next color yellow. And make sure that that's nice and soaked with the next color. And again, putting that pretty yellow down on the paper and letting it blend into the orange again. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring this yellow all the way down to the bottom of my paper. And you wanna be careful when you're working with this to try not to touch where you've already painted. What will happen is your finger will pull up the paint and you'll end up with fingerprints on the sides of your paper. And we don't wanna mess with that nice gradient that we have going in the background. Now, if you do need help uh, holding onto the paper, just gently hold down with the tip of your finger. But again, make sure it's dry before you do that. So now that we have our gradient done, I'm going to go ahead and clean off our brush and set it aside. We're going to do one of two things. We're going to either let this sit and dry, or we're going to go ahead and take a blow dryer to it so we can dry it faster and get onto the silhouette portion of our painting. So now that our painting's dry, now you notice that your paper might have a little bit of buckling, which means you'll just probably have a little bit of curvature to it because we've soaked it um, with so much water and wet media. So in order to keep working, if this is really bothering you, what you can do is just gently bend back against the curve. Now, don't try to, don't try to crease your paper just gently work with it. And you don't have to get it perfectly flat. We'll address how to get it perfectly flat at the end of the lesson. So now we're going to want to go ahead and grab our black oil pastel and we're just going to start hold make sure you hold on to your paper and we're going to start over here on the corner and we're just going to make a soft rolling hill. It's going to come down and back up. Now we're going to go ahead and start working on our tree, our first tree, and the tree branches. So I'm going to start here and come down. And that's one side of the tree. And then I'm going to come over here to the other side and just create this thin tree trunk. I'm going to bring a branch up here, have a branch up here, I think I'm going to have one more come up here, and then one more here. And you can add more branches if you'd like, yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine. And now we're going to go ahead and put some leaves on this tree. Now, remember, we're doing a silhouette, so that means we're not going to focus on each individual leaf. We're focusing on the outline that we see against the light. So when you look at a tree, you'll see the little leaves outlined. And just create little U or C shapes. We're going to go around like that. Okay, now we're going to start working on our second tree. So do just exactly what you did for the first one, the same method, and let's just put some branches in different places. Maybe from the trunk we have a branch coming off to the side here. 
maybe one here and bring this one out a little bit more and pull that trunk up. So now we're going to go ahead and add leaves to this tree. And since this is a silhouette, you're not going to be able to tell that these trees are one in front of the other. So we don't really have to worry about going behind this tree that we've already made. We're going to create the illusion of the top of this tree coming back here. This is just going to be a guideline for when we're going to come in and shade in all this line work we're doing. And maybe the leaves come up here. And remember, no tree is exactly the same. So your tree can have uh, any shape to it that you like. So you just want to make sure that um, you are really focusing on showing the leaf shapes with this scalloped sort of motion that we're doing repetitively around the tree. And this tree, I've decided, is going to have just another little bunch of leaves coming out right here. Okay, so now we have our hill with the trees, and maybe we're going to have just some little bushes over here, I'm keeping these trees company. And now we're going to start on our fence. So we're going to make one line down, two lines straight across, parallel, another line vertical, two parallel and across, another vertical. And this fence is old and it's a little rickety, so it doesn't have to be perfect. It's out in the country. It's been through a lot of weather. So just have fun making your fence. Give it your own personalized touch and give it lots of character. Now for the fun part, we get to go ahead and color in all of this line work that we've done with our oil pastels. And you want to be careful because oil pastels will smudge and um, you don't want to get them all over the place um, on the table, on the cat. So we're just going to go ahead and I'm going to work in circular motions applying the oil pastel directly on top of our sunset gradient. And what's really neat about this technique is as we're doing this, we're not trying to cover up this entire area with the black. We actually really want the color to show through. As you can see here, it's not solid black. You can still see the colors in the sunset coming through, and it adds a lot of texture and depth to your painting. And this is a really nice effect because even when you do see a silhouette of trees, you may not see all the details, but because there are uh, gaps between the leaves, sometimes you'll see the light peering through. So that's just a fun perk of using this technique and working with creating landscapes. Now if you go outside of the lines, that's okay. You can just come back in like say if I went out like that and go around and just add more leaves to your tree. And if you don't like the shape of your tree, how it's coming out as you're starting to color it in, you can do that same thing and add some extra leaves. tree with these downward strokes and for the hill we're gonna follow that same curvature 
that we've already made and just go across the paper here. You want to make sure that you also get the edges of your paper. Make sure that those are covered. And you don't have to press too hard to get the color down. Um, and pressing too hard is going to make your oil pastel go really quick. So just try to apply as little pressure as is needed to um, get a nice coat of your oil pastel on there. You see I'm coming in here on the side here, just making sure that I have that covered and filling in that last spot. Okay. And now we have our beautiful landscape with this sunset gradient in the background. Now, I said earlier we were gonna address um, this curling that some of you may have. So we can remedy this by simply wetting the back of the paper and putting it between two paper towels or uh, two pieces of wax paper, setting it in a book or setting other heavy objects on top of it, letting it sit overnight, and then when you come back to it the next day, you can take it out and it'll be perfectly flat. That ends the beginner's portion of this lesson. So if you are happy with your painting, we can stop right there. And if you would like to continue on to the advanced portion of this lesson, then just keep watching. Okay, so welcome back to the advanced portion of today's lesson. And I've gone ahead and gotten out our paint palette and I've put in some acrylic colors. So I'm gonna use the quinacridone rose, the lemon yellow, and the titanium white. Now that we have our silhouette painting, we're gonna go ahead and add some clouds in the background. So we're gonna take our number six round Creative Inspirations brush and we're going to dip it into the white. And if you need to stabilize your paper, use just a very light touch with your fingertip or two and hold it down in an area that's not covered with the oil. You want to make sure that you don't get the oil pastel anywhere. And we're just going to lightly dab the brush onto the paper here. Just create this soft and fluffy cloud up here in the sky. And you can rotate your brush around to get some of the extra paint that's on the sides onto your paper. And then when you run out, just go back to your white a little bit more and do the same thing and I'm just going up and down creating sort of this this wave here at the top and go back to the white and add another cloud down here using the same technique remember you just have to lightly dab your brush on the paper. You don't need a lot of pressure to get the paint off the brush. And you can add in clouds wherever you uh, feel like you would like them, wherever you think there needs to be a cloud. You don't have to put them in the same spots I am. Now when you look at a sunset and you see the clouds in the sky and you see all those beautiful bright warm colors, you'll notice that in your white clouds those colors will be reflecting. 
So, we're gonna add just a little bit more white to some of these clouds and then touch into the yellow and the red that we have. And just bring out that colorful background we have even more. So I'm gonna dip into the yellow here. In this case, I might wanna mix my color on my palette, the yellow with some of the white, so I can create a softer yellow and apply a more opaque layer, which means um, it will stand out from the background a little bit more and cover the little, a little bit more of the gradient and it'll make the cloud pop. So I'm going to come in here where this red is and take my yellow so there's more contrast than down here where this yellow is bleeding up into the orange. Just gently apply a little bit to the bottom. So we have the sunlight that's going behind this hill here reflecting up onto the cloud. And still with the little bit of yellow that I have on this brush, I'm gonna apply it to this cloud here that I have that is right over the orange. And just a little bit of it. We're gonna take just a dab of the yellow and just a little bit of the red. So red is very strong. And mix it until we have a nice orange that we're happy with. And we're gonna apply it in the middle here. This middle set of clouds. And let it um, gently blend with some of that yellow that we just put down. Now we're gonna take just a little bit of the white, and again, just another small dab of the red. And create a nice soft pink, and then we'll apply that to this bottom cloud here. And let it kind of fade. And I think I am really happy with how this has turned out. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop right here. However, if you want to do more with your clouds, if you say, wanna add some more highlights in with your whites and your yellows, um, make them brighter or even add more color in there and really create a vibrant, colorful sunset, then go ahead. This is your painting and make it your own. And be sure after you do finish your clouds, that you wash out your brush really well because acrylics, if you let them dry, it'll ruin your brush and you won't be able to use it anymore. So make sure that that's cleaned out really well before you put it away. However, your acrylics on the palette, if you let them dry out, then they will harden and you can easily just pull them right off and your palette will be perfectly clean. So thank you so much for following along with me. I had a whole lot of fun and I hope you guys had as much fun uh, playing along with me, creating this silhouette with the sunset gradient in the background. And I look forward to seeing you all on the next Art Explorations for Kids.